for the next 30 minutes as the world turns. Brought to you today by Gentle Joy, the dishwashing liquid with the mildness you can see on your hands. And by Comet Cleanser. It bleaches out stains, wipes out germs as no other leading cleanser can. Welcome to Elm City, USA, where almost everybody uses Comet Cleanser. Population, 8,003. Whoops, four. <laughs> Betty Simpson must have had her baby. Here's the proud father. Congratulations, Don. Oh, thanks. Always wanted a boy. Now, how's the housework? Awful. Look at that sink. Now, those stains are really tough. Where did you get that cleanser? I just bought it. Must be some Comet under the sink. Betty's a Comet fan. There. Sprinkle, rub a little. You see, only Comet contains chlorinol, greatest cleaning and bleaching agent ever put in a cleanser. Look. Well, give me a cat opener for food and Comet for cleaning up, and housework's a cinch. Why don't you get Comet, America's favorite cleanser? It bleaches out stains, wipes out germs, as no other leading cleanser can. I tried to phone Jeff not once, but several times. Grace, you know that Dr. Casson has given orders that Jeff should not have any incoming phone calls. I'm beside myself with worry, Chris, knowing so little. Well, I'm sure you know just as much as any of us. Well, surely there must be some progress by now. Grace, something like this takes time. You've just got to have a little more patience with Dr. Casson's treatment. You have to have a little more faith in him. I'm beginning to wonder about that. What do you mean? I talked to Dick, and that's the reason I'm here today. I feel very strongly that we should call in another doctor. We? The family, yes. Grace, I am in no position to say whether Jeff needs another doctor or not, nor are you. Well, I get very little satisfaction from Dr. Casson. This is because he can't tell you very much right now. Well, what you all seem to forget is that Jeff is my son. Mine and Dick's, and we're just as much interested Betty, you as... you are no more concerned or interested than any of us. We are all so anxious for Jeff to lick this problem and be released from the hospital. But, Grace, this takes time. You have got to give Jeff time. Well, can you tell me what's wrong with calling in a consultant? Well, I'm sure if it were necessary, Doug would have done it. Have you talked to Penny about this? Oh, there's no use talking to Penny. Well, she has to be considered, after all, she is Jeff's wife. What they decided, they decided together. Well, that doesn't necessarily make it right. Well, I think we will just have to wait and see. I think that there has been too much waiting, Chris. Penny should have let us know as soon as she realized that there was a problem. Grace, she thought it was something that she and Jeff could handle. Well, she had no right thinking that. I don't think that is very fair, Grace. Penny has been through an awful lot carrying this alone. She just tried to spare us all, as much as she could. Spare us? What? Jeff, an alcoholic? Jeff hospitalized? Penny did everything she could. I still think that we should call in another doctor. I don't think you can do any more than offer your opinion at this time. And I wouldn't even do that. Doug has known Jeff for a number of years. He's an internist. And I would still like to know just how much good hospitalization is doing, Jeff. Well, have you asked Dr. Casson that? I have asked Dr. Casson many questions and received little or no satisfaction. Well, then I suggest that you talk to Penny about this if you feel this way. But mind you, I don't share your feelings and I don't think that Dick does either. What you don't seem to realize, Grace, is that Jeff has to cure himself. Doug or any other doctor can only help the cure is up to Jeff. Have you talked to Dr. Casson today? No, I haven't. Well, from the little he told me this morning, Jeff had a pretty bad night. What do you mean? He wanted his clothes. He wanted to get out of there. He wanted to go home. And I think maybe he was right. Do you mean to say that yes, you Yes. Were... I feel, and so does Dick, that maybe if Jeff and Penny could just get away somewhere alone, then Jeff's problem would solve itself. I don't think so. After Jeff is released from the hospital, then he and Penny can decide whether they want to go away. But if I were you, I would keep out of this. I want to see Jeff. 
And Dr. Casson tells me that I cannot see him for several days. But you know, don't you, that Penny hasn't even been able to see him. Whether you know it or not, Chris, before they became engaged, Jeff and I became very close. Until you interfered in the San Diego situation. Oh, you too. Well, you're not going to deny, are you? That you told Jeff not to go to San Diego, that you told him that he wasn't ready for San Diego. Well, I don't think I put it as strongly as that. Well, I think you did. And whether you know it or not, Jeff doesn't feel too kindly toward either you or his father, but more particularly toward you. I didn't come here this morning, Chris, to hear anything like that from you. Look, Grace, I am only interested in Penny and Jeff's happiness. And if I can do anything to secure that, regardless of whose toes I'm going to step on, I'll do it. And my advice to you is to stay out of this. I'll see about that. Grace, if you get into this now, you're going to regret it. Believe me, you're going to regret it very much. all afternoon. Speaking of hands, Grace, wish I could get a new deal on these. Oh, I'm so ashamed of them. Ever try Joy for your dishes? Oh, no, why? Well, what you use for doing dishes could be the problem. And Joy can help. Really? How? Because Joy is mild as a bubble bath. You can see that kind of mildness on your hands. Well, it certainly shows on yours. Look, take this Joy home. See? Comes in a pretty new plastic bottle. Gee, thanks. Let's see if we can't get those hands soft and pretty again. <laughs> When's the next bridge party? Why? Because I'm going to be there with the best hands at the table. Thanks to Joy. Joy has a mildness you can see on your hands. Yes? Well, good morning, Chris. Tom, well, when did you get back from your vacation? Oh, last night. <laughs> well, it is good to see you. Well, it's good to be back. Tell me, what kind of a time did you have, anyway? Well, it was real relaxing and restful. Oh, I understood you went to some sort of a resort, huh? Well, it wasn't exactly a resort. It, it was a lodge in Canada. Ah, that sounds wonderful. Well, I was glad to get away, but... I'm sure glad to be back. <laughs> you know, when you're in harness so many weeks out of the year, well, to get away for a while is fine, but, you know, you sort of itch to get back yeah, into things. Yeah. Well, sit down, sit down. Well, thanks. Well, tell me, how have you been? Oh, just fine. fine. The family? Well, they're quite well, thank you, Tom. I called the Cassons last night. Doug tells me that Claire and Ellen are away on a cruise. Yes, that's right. They went, uh, left the week before last. What happened? Well, Tom, I don't know any of the details. I guess Ellen just decided that she had to get away. Uh-huh. I don't know when they'll be back. Well, that's what Doug said. I don't think that Ellen should have tried to do anything after Tim's death, really. Mm. You know, I, I saw her shortly before I left. She certainly didn't seem like herself. Yeah, I know. What are her plans when she gets back? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you, Tom. Doug told me that he expects Claire back sometime this week, although he wasn't too sure. Apparently, Ellen plans to be away for some time. Yeah, apparently. Why the smile, Chris? <laughs> I was just wondering about you and your interest in Ellen. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that. I like Ellen. She's a fine girl. Intelligent. Interesting to be with, but... Well, that's as far as it goes. I see. Chris, I... I read an item in the paper this morning. Well, if there's anything I can do... Anything you can do about what? Jeff. I thought maybe I'd drop in and see him at the hospital. Tom, what are you talking about? Well, in the paper this morning, there was a small item about Jeff Baker. Son of Richard Baker, son-in-law of Chris Hughes, etc being in a memorial hospital under observation. 
that all it's in? That's right. Well, Tom, yes, it's true. Jeff has been in the hospital for a few days. It's uh, nothing serious, really. I thought I'd drop in and see him on my way home. No, no, I wouldn't do that, Tom. Why not? It's right on my way. Well, as I understand, Jeff is not having any visitors. But, Chris, you, you just said it wasn't serious. Well, I don't believe it is, Tom. Is there any possibility that it's a recurrence of the pericarditis? No. No, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, well, evidently I've, I've walked into something I shouldn't have. I, I'm sorry, Chris, no, if you no. don't want to talk about no, it. No, Tom, it's just... This is a rather... rather delicate subject, Tom. I... Since you have read about it... Oh, look, Chris, you don't owe me any explanations. It's really none of my no, business. No, no, no. I just thought... Tom... I have not said anything to Judge Lowell about this, but it's a little different with you. You're almost as close to Jeff as I am. This isn't any ordinary problem. It's... It's a drinking problem. What? That's right. You mean that Jeff had to be hospitalized because... Yes. It got to be that bad. Well, I can't remember Jeff ever being much of a drinker. No, he wasn't. He drank very little, till he went to San Diego. Seemed like a great many things had their beginnings in San Diego. Well, I, I don't know. I guess I can't really say that either. Chris, you know, if there's anything I can do... I... Well, thank you, Tom. Say, how about lunch? No, I'm sorry. I'm meeting Penny. She's coming into the city. I'm going to have lunch with her. Well, give her my best, will you? I'll do that, Tom. Thank you again. Take care, Chris. Bye. Have you lived in New Jersey long? No, I haven't. We've only been here all three or four months. Where was home before that? Missouri. Folks from Missouri have to be shown. So we washed some new laundry the Smith family had soiled, then asked Mrs. Lois Smith, which half is better looking? The one on the right. right. Now, why does it look better, Mrs. Smith? It looks whiter to me. Would you like to know what it was washed in? Yes, I would. Washed in cheer. Cheer. <laughs> the one you liked was washed in cheer, and uh, the one that you are not quite as pleased with, in another brand. Well, now, Mrs. Smith from Missouri, any conclusions? Well, yes, I think I can really see the difference. I think that uh, the cheer did a very nice job. Right. Most women can see the difference because only cheer has the blue magic whitener. So, ladies, why don't you try cheer? See the difference in whiteness yourself. The first portion of this program has been brought to you today by Blue Cheer and by Gentle Joy. We'll continue with As the World Turns following station identification. And now the second portion of As the World Turns brought to you today by Nabisco. See Jeff today yet? Yes, I saw him, Penny, but he was sleeping. I didn't want to disturb him. Sit down, dear. As I told you, he had a pretty bad night. I was beginning to think that he was making some progress, but when you called... Oh, now, Penny, just this one incident doesn't necessarily mean that there's no progress being made. But it was unfortunate. I do know that we can't have him disturbing the entire floor as he did last night. And everyone on the floor heard him? He was out in the corridor, yelling for his clothes, shouting he wanted to get out of here. Doctor, the fact that he 
I haven't had a drink in five or six days. Well, that's it, of course. Penny, Jeff is going through what we call withdrawal. It isn't pleasant. That's, that's why uh, patients like Jeff are usually kept on the psychiatric floor. Because they can be, and very often are, difficult. I think you should know that if there are any more problems like last night, the hospital may insist that I move, Jeff. Doctor, about last night, do you really think that Jeff would have left here if he'd had his clothes? My honest answer, Penny, is yes, I think he would have. And there's still the possibility he might? Well, there's always that possibility. I plan to talk to Jeff when I make rounds. Of course, I don't know how much good that'll do. Doctor, if, if you'd let me see him after you see him, I'm almost sure you wouldn't have any more trouble. Penny, let me... Let me try to explain something to you. I can't hold Jeff here against his will. He can go any time he wants to. Now, up to now, I haven't made his clothes available to him. In the hope that in the next few days, things will ease up a bit for him. But sooner or later, we're going to have to return his clothing. May I see him? If I give you permission, Penny, I want you to be prepared for what you're likely to see. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you'll see a man who isn't quite in control of himself. A man who takes little or no interest in his appearance. A man who's having a pretty rough time of it. I want to see him. All right, Penny, I'll see him now and then, oh, say in about 15 or 20 minutes. But please, do try to be as much yourself as you can. I know it's going to be difficult. Maybe. I love Jeff. I think you know there isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do for him. Of course I know that. You can wait here rather than go up on the floor. There's a lot of talk, isn't it? You knew there would be. I really don't care, Doctor. Just so long as Jeff gets well again, that's all that matters. We'll return to As the World Turns in just a moment. You're welcome, Tom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Reed, and here is the secret of my popularity with the kids. Delicious no-bake brownies made with Nabisco sugar honey grains, finely rolled. You see, to the grains, you just add some evaporated milk, miniature marshmallows, chocolate bits, and then, well, the recipe's right here on the box of Nabisco sugar honey grains. And it's so easy, there's no baking. You just chill and serve. And these brownies are wholesome brownies made with pure Nabisco grams, not just any graham cracker. It's a wonderful, delicious summer uh, dessert, too, you know. Only Nabisco gives you your favorite sugar honey grams, plus the no-bake brownie recipe right on the side of the package. You try it, won't you? I'm sure it'll make a great big hit with the nibblers at your house. Oh, yes, Tommy. Please, can I have some more? You sure can. Here, help yourself. Thank you. Something tells me that I'm going to have to make another batch. Thank you, Mrs. Ray. You're welcome, dear. You just be sure you have plenty of Nabisco sugar honey grams at your house. I've been waiting for you, Doctor. Why didn't you stop in to see me this morning? I did. You were asleep. I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, I looked in on you. You didn't get much sleep last night. I wanted you to get as much as you could this morning. I had a pretty bad night. Yes, I know. Look, I want to know why you took my clothes away from me. Jeff, if your clothes had been in this room, you would have walked out of here last night, now wouldn't you? That's right, and I may just want to do the same thing. Now, look, the medication you gave me... It's fine, but it helps a little. I... Jeff, the night you were admitted to the hospital, I gave you an idea as to what you could expect. I told you then the medication would help just so much, the rest would be up to you. Look, if I thought it was going to be anything like this, I'd never have come here. 
There are one or two things I want to discuss with you. Jerry. Oh, yeah, and there are one or two things I want to discuss with you, too. And one of them is Dr. Damon. Oh, I understand he stopped by to see you. Yes, who told him to come in to see me? I did. Why? Because I think he can be of some help to you. Well, I don't want any psychiatrist. Believe me, Jeff, if Dr. Andrews had been in town, I would have consulted with him. I don't think you should consult with anyone until you get my permission first. I thought we'd more or less agreed to leave that sort of decision up to me, to my judgment. Well, maybe we did, but you keep Damon out of it. All right, now you just sit down for a minute. Go ahead, sit down. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Jeff, and I'm going to tell you straight. It took quite a bit of doing to get you in here on the fourth floor, but if there's any more trouble like there was last night, the hospital's going to insist that you be moved to a psychiatric floor because the hospital thinks that your problem is psychiatric. Now, I still think and hope we can handle it here, but I've got to have your cooperation. Well, you may as well know right now that I would never consent to go to a psychiatric floor. Jeff, you're not battling me. You're battling yourself. Look, I think I want my release. Jeff, wait it out just a few more days. Look, I have waited it out just as long as I care to. Not as long as Penny wants you to. She's here, Jeff. She wants to see you. And I've given her permission to see you. We'll return to As the World Turns in just a moment. President of a big company, leading the efforts of hundreds of people. But we're peeking far into the future. This top executive looks quite different today, much younger, like your own son, who may grow up to be a leader. And right now, your child has the important job of growing, building a strong, straight body. That means your child needs protein. Protein as Nabisco shredded wheat brings it to you. Protein even more effective than nature made it. So it has growth building nourishment it didn't have before. Improved wheat protein. Nabisco shredded wheat is hearty nourishment in the golden toasted regular biscuits or in the crunchy new spoon size shredded wheat juniors. Two delicious ways Nabisco brings you improved wheat protein. For a strong body and a bright future, Serve your family Nabisco Shredded Wheat and Nabisco Shredded Wheat Juniors with improved wheat protein. I know, I know how I look. You didn't have a very good night, the doctor said. I had a miserable night. I wanted to come home. I didn't have a very good night either. I wanted you home with me. But I knew I had to wait. You both have to wait. Stay too long, darling. The doctor said just for a little while. You're what I need, Penny. I know, darling, but Dr. Cassidy. Look, I'm, I'm just about fed up with him. Oh, don't say that, sweetie. I'm sorry. I, I just don't know how much longer I can hold out. You can do anything you want to do. Did you know that Dr. Damon was in to see me? I, I didn't know about it until today, no. Well, I don't want a psychiatrist. I won't have one, Penny. Doctor, well, darling, just trust Dr. Casson, please. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this no. for me. Darling, I want you to... There, there isn't anything in the world that I wouldn't do for you. You know that. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right now. I, I really, I'm, I'm doing fine. I know you are. That's why I was so anxious to see you. Uh, how, how about your folks? They feel just as I do. And uh, your mother? I'm so little worried. You know how she is. Are, are you staying with them? No, Jeff. Now, I wanted to call you last night. They, they wouldn't let me put the call through. I thought maybe it was just as well, maybe with your mother. No, darling, I'm, I'm at home. I am going to be at our home until the doctor dismisses you. Oh, 
Penny, will that ever happen? Darling, I'm sure you're over the worst of it. You've just got to keep saying to yourself, each day, today will pass, and it's going to get easier and easier. I know it will. And then it won't be a problem anymore. Yes, yes, darling. You're right. You are right. Uh, Penny, maybe, uh, maybe you, you better, you better go now, huh, honey? All right, Jeff. Darling, if, if, if tonight goes all right, if everything is all right, I'm, I'm sure the doctor will let me come to see you again tomorrow. I'm all right, Penny. Now that I've seen you, I'll be fine. I want to call you tonight. Uh, you'll be home, hmm? Of course I'll be home. You have a good night. much longer I can stand this. I don't know. This is me, Millicent. I'm five, but my sister is beautiful, especially on telephones. It's Tom, darling, helloing from the airport, and I'll see you in 30 minutes. We instantly go wild and peek at our frizzle, frazzle hair ends. Everything depends on the ends. The vital beauty inch. When the ends dry, hair flies, and we get the wispies. See? Our vital beauty inch becomes absolutely revived with Suave. Suave's first name is Helene Curtis. Suave lotion is so light, so non-greasy, just a kiss. Silken's every strand. Suave revives our vital beauty inch, so hair behaves shiny, gorgeous, all over. Your hair will be lovely with Suave. Helene Curtis Suave Lotion. Or, for extra dry hair, Suave Cream Concentrate. As the world turns has been brought to you today by Nabisco, bakers of the crackers, cookies, and cereals more people enjoy. They're the best you can buy when they're baked by Nabisco. Fashions from Susie Perrette. Portions of this program were pre-recorded. Join us again tomorrow for another half hour of drama on As the World Turns.